Yeah. My right. family and I, this is a big part of our story, we moved to Nashville a little over a year ago. Um, we're still up in Chicago. And we're when we lived in Chicago, we weren't downtown. We lived in the suburbs, um, yeah. uh, in the northwest suburbs near, mm-hmm. like, Schaumburg. But uh, we're still up there, I'd say, once or twice a month. I'll be up there this weekend. I'm doing a um, – Marriage conference in Peoria, which is a couple hours south, and then yep. uh, doing leading worship at uh, the Mothership at Harvest Rolling Meadows, and then doing a release yep. concert that Sunday night on Valentine's yep. Day. So. Oh, well, that's going to be great. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you one of the challenges with doing uh, webinars like this is I don't know how to start it officially. So those of you who are listening yeah. in, we're already started. We just sort of, you know, got on the phone and started talking. So I'm on the phone with Meredith. Andrews, she's. Are you in Nashville actually right now, or in Chicago? I am. I am You're, in Nashville. It's oh, okay. Snow today, so Very good. We're having like a little snow day over here. Oh, I heard. I have a friend who was texting me and saying he thought it was snowing in in Nashville. So that's yes, that's it crazy. Is. Yes. It's not like Vanco- Vancouver or Chicago where they can feel yeah. like. I mean, we we have maybe half an inch, and they yeah. they called school like schools are closed today. So yeah, yeah. You know. Well. In Vancouver, <laughs> we screaming in the background. That's yeah, fine. no problem. Well, you know, and this is all part of it. I think uh, all of us listening in are looking forward to just getting to know, you know, the real Meredith. She's a mom. She's a, you know, she's a wife. She's a worship leader, songwriter. I mean, there's so many elements that go into your life, and I can really tell from uh, some of the lyrics and themes coming out of your new album that it's a, it's very much, you know, born out of real life experiences and so uh so that's all we really want to do today is just kind of hear about you some of your stories and your heart you just let it kind of pour out naturally and then of course we'd like to talk a little bit about the album that releases next week so this is a bit of a a pre-release not pre-release but kind of a a preview to some of the story behind the songs we have three of them already uh, live in praise charts, and I know that you've got them in, in iTunes as well, so um, people can yeah. capture those. And, of course, we've got lots of other songs that you have written, and uh, people love your music and your heart, your voice, and lots of people are following the the lead that you are giving, so appreciate you a lot. Do you remember last well, time we you. did uh, a time together, I think you were in a group of uh, five of you, five worship leaders. That was the first time I think I ever did a webinar with, you know, five people. But um, oh, that that's was, right. Was it with Vertical Church? That's right. That's right. I totally remember that. I mean, that was like a few years back, but I remember that was up in the offices and yeah, yeah. So I remember back then I had my cell phone. I I went out to some subdivision, you know, on a hill overlooking the Vancouver Mountains, and I was pacing up and down. Um, you know, among the, the homes there. And that's that's how I used to do these webinars. I needed to get myself kind of walking, get the blood flowing. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, I do remember talking to you, and I thought, you know, this webinar is not going to be too challenging because Meredith, she's so easygoing. She's like, she's easy to talk to. So, uh, oh, good. I love so now I just have you. So that's really good. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Okay. Well, why don't you, uh, like, maybe just as a place to get started, I think it's always great to to get a frame of reference of where you're at kind of in your life right now, even just as we were talking about you're living in Nashville and you got kids behind you who might be, you know, playing with toys or screaming or whatever <laughs> it is. Maybe you've got a dog. You know, I've got a dog just outside my door that I'm hoping is not going to uh, to bark too loud. But... Give us a and little. My neighbors have a dog, but. Oh yeah, there you go. But my neighbor's dog sounds like he's got the croup, so you might hear that too. Who knows? <laughs> okay. So, anyways, why don't you give us a little uh, frame of reference on on uh, your life in February 2016, living in Nashville? Maybe just a little story of how you got to be kind of planted exactly where you are right now. So, yes. is that is that okay? Can I give you that kind of open door to just. Catch us up to speed yep. with who is Meredith. Yeah, okay. Well, okay. Okay. Um, well just for to speak to the Nashville piece, um, yeah. I've been on staff, and I'm still on staff at Harvest, um, and I've been on staff there since 2006. 
And um, we decided just, uh, I guess it was probably about a year and a half ago that um, it was time to move to Nashville. We just felt the green light. We had prayed about it for a long time. We wanted to make sure that um, when we did leave that, uh, or if we did leave, that everything was in a good place. Like we were, we never left Harvest because we were like, oh, we're ready to move on. We don't want to be with these people anymore. No, it was actually yeah. really hard. It was like, we love these people. We don't want to leave them, but we feel like the Lord is moving us um, to Nashville. And so that's why, you know, we're still very heavily involved there. It's still our church. We call it mm. our sending church, you know, and, mm. and those people still speak into our lives and our, our dearest friends and family. And um, we actually have, you know, Andy Rozier, uh, the British guy who leads worship with us at Vertical, um, he just stayed with us the last two nights, you know, and um, if he comes down often that we're working on that vertical church record, but that's, I'll talk, I can talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah, so um, we moved down here and um, my husband, Jacob is a songwriter and a producer. And uh, it's funny because when we first got married, he wasn't really, you know, he was playing piano for Jeremy camp and then he started playing keys for me and, um, and he would travel with me, and he was essentially my band. And then we started having kids, and he kind of was like, well, I want to I want to stay home, you know, with the kids, and I want to kind of concentrate on my own thing, you know, just um, – sorry, I'm going to take you off speaker just because my kids are right outside my door. But, um, yeah, just kind of like um, – <laughs> they're playing the harmonica it's all right we got a backup band band. already yeah no, totally <laughs> they're just like playing the harmonica outside my door yeah I'm like guys anyways yeah they know okay. I'm, here. I'm in here talking to people and they're like why can't we come in anyway <laughs> okay so um but yeah whenever jacob kind of started out like he didn't he wasn't necessarily a songwriter and it's been really cool to watch the lord grow him in his gifting and um you know he just kind of started out small and first song he ever played for me I was like babe don't quit your day job you know so <laughs> and now he's like one of them I think he's an incredible songwriter like he just got three cuts on the new Jesus culture record and I'm like that's freaking awesome like really oh he's he's yes. on the new um is it the alive Let album it or the, no no the echo one out. sorry uh-huh. that album Let has it been it been really Go really going strong i mean just from our yeah. world and in praise start so what were the songs that he had a hand in on that album yeah the title track let it echo um and then there's a song uh set me ablaze that katie torwalt sings and then in your presence that kim sings beautiful so yeah so it just all that to say you know like our obviously we're married and we do this together and it's um and it's really cool and it has its moments where it's really hard, um, and I can talk more about that as well. But um, just in moving to Nashville, um, it's just been really neat to see how the Lord has given him favor. It's yeah. taken, I'd say, about a year and a half for us to kind of feel like, okay, we are finding our people here. We feel, we're feel we feeling a little bit more settled. Um, you know, we still miss all of our our community up in Chicago but thankfully we're up there at least once a month so it's not like we're never going to see him again um so it's been a really good journey for us and just as a family just to kind of like okay we're going to lay down some roots here um we're just going to dive into whatever we feel like God has set before us and there's a lot of uncertainty in that and um but we're just going to go for it and trust the Lord and um it's been really good. It's been probably one of the most growing seasons that we've yeah. ever been in. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we've. Uh, I think you gave us this phrase, the promised hope, which we've kind of, you know, uh, gave us a bit of a theme to our time together. So I'm assuming that's something yeah. that you gave us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what, what does that word mean and why is that on your heart, the promised sure. hope? Yeah. Well, it was actually tossed around as a, uh, a possible album title um, yeah. for this record. We were, we had like a, I just had a list of like 10 album titles that we were going through and the promised hope was one of them. And I, because I just wanted to capture um, what this whole record is about and not just this record, but um, what the last season of my life has been, mm-hmm. uh, especially the last two years. And, um, you know, I think like, 
for me, th- these songs were, um, I just feel like they were gifts to me. That The Lord was just like, here you go. You need to write this for yourself. You need to sing this over yourself. And, um, and it was like the Lord just kind of offering me hope in, uh, in what seemed like on certain days like a hopeless situation. So when we moved to Nashville, um, I was pregnant with our third and our only daughter, Frankie, and, um, you know, leaving everything we knew behind and starting over in a new place and already feeling overwhelmed by life and um, how do you balance family and ministry and traveling and um, and make sure everybody's healthy and you actually have some kind of margin in your life. Like some, um, there were some days where that just felt impossible. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it took us to a place, especially uh, Jacob and I, that we just felt um, just kind of lost. And uh, we went through the hardest season in our marriage that we've been through. Mm. And um, we just felt like we were under constant attack from the enemy. I mean, it was it was unbelievable. It just felt like everything was hard. Everything was a fight. Nothing was working out. And it was just stress compounding on attack compounding on more stress and um all of these things and so we just got to this point where we just felt like we don't know what's up and what's down and i reached out to um a lot of people like that I, you know trusted friends i had these two women especially that just prayed us through and like the lord would just wake them up in the middle of the night and they would just start interceding for us um and it and I don't know where we would be if it weren't for them, honestly. Um, but at the beginning of it all, like even around the time that I wrote Soar, um, the Lord just kind of put something in my heart and my spirit and uh, just kind of like a promise and a little bit of a um, kind of a heads up um, for what was coming. Um, and he used my good friend Susie Larson, who's an author and a speaker, and we've done a couple women's events together, and she's a dear friend of mine, and we got together. Um, I was just in a place where I was looking for older women to pour into me, you know, just especially women in ministry. Like, how do you do this with family? How do you make sure that everybody's healthy? How do you um, stay grounded and, and um, steer, still hear the Lord in the chaos, you know, and, all of these things, and so she was just so gracious to meet me halfway between Minneapolis and Chicago. Um, she lives in Minneapolis, and we spent the day together, and we prayed together, and she just said, Meredith, I, I believe that the Lord is about to take you through um, a training season in your life. It's going to be refining for you, and and it's going to look like God working through your marriage, and there are going to be days that feel like your marriage isn't going to make it, but actually what God is doing in you and what God is doing in Jacob are two different things, but when he brings you back together at the end, you're going to be more unified than you've ever been. And so I was like, wow, okay. I didn't I didn't understand, obviously, the weight of that. I didn't understand what it was going to look like. I didn't understand how long it was going to take. Um, because this time last year, I was like, God, I, I don't even I don't even know how um to like move forward because this all feels like it's falling apart. Hmm. And um just through friends and um through just the Lord working on both of our hearts and um a couple I'd say specific instances and times of like praying with some trusted friends together and then we went to counseling at Harvest and there were a couple mile markers along the way that just kind of gave us a little bit of a um a jump start if you will. Um but I can just I can say now that the Lord has brought us to that place where we are more unified than we've ever been and and I look back and I go it was only God that did that. Like God restored my marriage and God restored our love for one another. And he showed us how to look at each other through a different lens, a lens that we didn't see each other through before. And it's that lens of grace. You know, it's the perspective, the way that God looks at us, like seeing one another through that lens, whether it's your spouse or your kids or your friends or your roommate or whoever it may be or stranger on the street. It's like, Lord, teach me to love people the way that you love me, you know? So, um, Anyway, I'm saying a lot about that right no, now. But that's uh, it. That's I'm drawing it. many parallels. In, I mean, I'm sure many of us listening in is like, oh, man, you're going through that? I just went through that. 
I thought I was on my own. <laughs> I thought I, I was know. the only one who, you know, has to, you know, get up in the morning and go to work and put on that great face and, you know, and wonder yeah. really how am I going to press on through what's, you know, what so feels like such a challenge. And, and I happen mm. to be not in that season, you know, right now, but certainly right. have been there where I, you know, I was like at the edge of the edge of the edge yeah. of family mm-hmm. falling apart. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and it sounds like, I don't know to what degree, you know, yours and my story are, are the same. I'm sure, I mean, we have very different stories, but but um, it does bring a, a depth of commitment and uh, a reality to, I mean, I'm just thinking about you as you get up in front of people and you're leading people, but, you know, when you have overcome, pressed through, and and even in your writing songs, I knew I didn't know this story about you, but looking at some of the songs you've written, now even most recently, it's like this girl has come through something. She is like a fighter. She's an overcomer, you know, and mm-hmm. she is looking at these challenges and and you know, like the word deeper. Even that title track to your album is you get deeper, having yep. gone through this stuff, right? I'm imagining yeah, that's, that's, exactly that's the right. story. Even yeah, I just yeah. happened to be watching this uh, older uh, interview of you yesterday, and they were talking about your, like going back to your early childhood, you grew up as a, a foster child, isn't that right? No, I didn't grow up as a foster child. My oh, parents were in foster, foster children. Oh, I mean, okay. My parents were foster parents, sorry. Good, glad <laughs> we got that clarified. But even yeah, so, no, I, you know, I mean, that's just, it's a very unique child. Uh, upbringing and you're surrounded by yeah. other kids and and it all yeah, sort of absolutely. lays a garden and planting seeds of this girl's going to have to learn to you know to fight and overcome and deepen mm-hmm. her walk because the Lord has great things for you so it's like a pattern. Well, and I think that's for all of us too, Ryan. Like I mm-hmm. even just the 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 thought of um you know, the song deeper. It's Mm -hmm. what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, you know? And I think, like, sometimes our tendency is to go, God, I didn't think it was going to be this hard. Like, why is it still so hard? And, like, the thing is, the Lord never promised that it was going to be easy. He actually promised the opposite. He promised that we'd have trouble. But he said, but Jesus said that I've overcome the world. And that's where we find our hope in the fact that, like, even though what we see in front of us just, it feels like it's, you know, our world is coming um, crashing down like um jesus has overcome the enemy jesus has overcome all of that trouble and Mm -hmm. um and what he's doing in the middle of it is making us who we are and i loved i love this picture i actually watched terminator 2 the other night well we watched half of it we're going to finish it sometime this week i don't know um which it's such a 90s movie and i'm just like wow this is We've come a long way. <laughs> yes, we have. But, um, but like, towards the beginning, it has this, there's this, like, brief scene of Sarah Connor. You know, she's the main female um, lead in the uh, in the movie. And um, in the second one, she is, like, incarcerated. She's in this mental institution because she's talking crazy, talk, everybody thinks she's nuts because she's talking about these robots that are going to come to kill her and this guy from the future and blah, blah, blah. And they're just like, this is ridiculous. And so they lock her up and she's in this padlocked cell, right? But it shows this brief clip of her. Um, She's turned her bed up on its side and she's doing pull-ups on her bed. And I just think that's amazing because, like, I mean, I'm not saying that Sarah Connor is our role model, but what I'm saying is, like, she could have just been laying there and crying and, like, saying, when am I going to see my son or who's going to get me out of here and, like, my life is over. But instead, she she believes that there's a battle coming. When she gets out of that mental institution, she believes that the, she's going to have to face the battle of her life mm-hmm. or she's going to face the enemy of, you know, you know. That's, come, that's been coming against her. And so instead of just wallowing in her situation, she actually makes the most of it, and she starts going, okay, well, I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to use this situation to make me stronger. And that is exactly what I believe the Lord 
uses trials for. It's that whole developing perseverance and character and hope which does not disappoint us. And I finally, I feel like I'm finally starting to understand even the meaning of that passage because it's like in that hard place, when you get pressed, when you get crushed, when you feel like you're just like at the bottom and you're being squeezed and you're like, I can't take any more. And that's when God is just saying, okay, what are you made of? Because I, I, I'm trying to show you here that, like, um, your identity is not in what you do or what people think about you or even if everything is working out in your world. Like, your identity is found in who you believe you are, you know, and who, and who God says that you are. And yeah. so it's like it's, it's, it's going from that place and saying, okay, Lord, do whatever you have to do inside of my heart so that you can – develop inside of me the character that's going to sustain me on the other side because Mm -hmm. like if I hadn't walked through what I walked through in the last two years and Jacob hadn't walked through what he walked through in the last two years like we wouldn't be at the place now to receive the favor that God is kind of giving us even with like I mentioned the songs that he's got on Jesus culture you know like Jacob will be the first to tell you like the Lord is just given me favor and I don't know why and I don't know how long it's going to last but I'm just going to be faithful where he's got me and and I and I also think about Joseph in the Bible when you know God gave him a promise and a dream when he was 17 but he wasn't ready to walk in that yet he wasn't ready to see that dream fulfilled because he was immature and he had a lot of growing to do you know as as evidenced by the what he did after he got the dream he blabbed it to all his brothers who hated him all the more for it, you know, and so Mm -hmm. threw him in a pit and sold him in slavery, and then he was wrongfully accused and thrown into prison. And I just believe that that 13-year period of just, just, I mean, it was horrific for him. It was awful. And I'm sure he was going, like, I don't even care about the dream. Just take me now, Lord. I'm just over this. Like, I don't want to spend my life rotting away in a prison cell. You know, and I'm sure that the dream felt like a distant memory, and there were many days where he questioned, like, God, are you going to come through? But I believe that God met him in that in that place and was doing a deep work inside of Joseph that he could only do in prison, that he could only do um, through that training in the low places. And so when Joseph walked out of there, he carried a greater authority than he had when he walked in. And he w- he carried a greater maturity. And he knew who he was in the Lord and that his identity didn't depend on the promise being fulfilled. That his identity was in who God was. And, and the promise was actually the presence of God with him, even in that dark place. Mm-hmm. And, and I just I resonate with that so much. And I'm just so thankful for God, even in the dark place for me. Like, I found the presence of God to be so real and so sweet and so tender and exactly what I needed. It was what sustained me through the days of feeling like I'm a failure. I, I'm a failure of a wife. I'm a failure of a mom. I'm a failure of a human being. Yeah. And the Lord was like, okay, that is a lie from the enemy. Yeah. You've got to align yourself with what I say and who I yeah. say you are. And yeah. just trust me in this process because I'm making you and I'm taking you to a deeper place. I'm establishing yeah. your root system. And it's going to be for what I'm going to do on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I have, a, I have a question to ask you. And, and some of this kind of is, uh, as you're sharing, I'm just reflecting on my own story. And, and uh, we've all got our different stories. But this is a question from... A wor- a specifically a worship leader, worship pastor's perspective, and and uh, there's there's a lot of worship leaders who are listening to us today. So this is what I want to know: is when we as as worship pastors or worship leaders are going through these fires, struggles, um, things like that, the the unique position that we often are in is we still have to get up on stage uh, often every Sunday or every other Sunday, and I have, yeah. you know, personally, I'm just thinking about how many Saturday nights I went through and I was like, I can't do this. I, I mean, I can remember right. cowering in the back of the stage behind the curtain thinking, God, I can't, I can't go out there. <laughs> Please mm-hmm. don't make me go. And, uh, oh, there's right. one service I remember. It was in between the first and second service. And uh, I just went down into this back corner of the prayer room and 
hovered down on my knees and I was just like, ah, take me out of this like exposed Mm -hmm. place. So Mm -hmm. can you talk to us? Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm imagining that you had some seasons in the last couple of years where, you know, you were actually inside it and you know, I don't know, maybe you were at a women's conference or something like that and you have to stand up and give all these people hope and, you know, so so talk us through a little bit about what what does that look like when, when you're in the fire and yeah. you're in this unique place of still pressing on in your calling. As yeah. A, as a minister. Oh, I think it's I think it's interesting that you use the word exposed, because yeah. we we think of that word as a negative thing, um, mm-hmm. but in reality, it's what God wants to do. He wants to expose us, not in a way that's shameful, because God doesn't shame His children, but in a way that brings the things into the light that that need to be brought into the light, and in a way that makes us a little bit uncomfortable, even and vulnerable, where we just go, okay, I'm not going to hide. Um, what's going on? I he, the thing that I had going for me is that I have a terrible poker face, and like <laughs> if if something's going on in my life that yeah. is hard, like you're gonna know it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not gonna try and cry on everybody's shoulder, but I'm not the kind of person that's gonna like, um, just gloss you know gloss over everything and pretend like my world is perfect and um. And there's all I see are roses and butterflies and puppies or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, I think as worship leaders and as people in ministry, we do we do people a disservice um, if we try to hide behind some kind of pretense. If we um, try to put on some kind of mask. Now, granted, like that doesn't mean that you get up on stage and you air your dirty laundry. It doesn't mean you get up on stage and you say, um, you know, like the details of the, um, of the darkness that's taking place in your life. But I think in, um, just with some semblance of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, uh, discretion and discernment, um, just going, okay, God, like, I want to be authentic. These are, especially if you're serving at a church, like, these are my people, and they're walking through hard things too. And chances are, whatever I'm walking through, if, like, we'll be better off if we walk through it together, you know? And if they know that, like, hey, I'm up here, and I'm calling you in the presence of God, not because I'm super spiritual and because I've got everything in my life right or, like, perfect, but because... I have been there because I've been in the presence of God and I know that that is the only place that I can find hope. And that is the only place that I can find some sort of solace and comfort for the turmoil that's going on in my life. And I would just encourage every worship leader that's listening, like, um, it's not a show. What we do, it's not for show. You know, what we do is going to be the most effective when we do it from an honest and an authentic place. Like, I mean, this is silly, but there was one day when I was carrying one of my babies um, to the nursery and was running late. And just as I was about to hand him or her off, I can't even remember which one it was, spit, it, but the, the baby spit up all down my shoulder, which went all down my shirt and all down my back. And I'm like, well, I don't really have time to clean this off. I like grabbed a quick like towel and I'm like, well, hey, everybody. I smell like baby puke, you know, but like, <laughs> hey, yeah. I'm still Welcome excited to work to the Lord together. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's right. And I think those things are not only endearing, but even more than that, they're um, like people need to know that we're just real people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and that's why I appreciate even what you said at the beginning about like me being chill and easygoing. Like, I always yeah. want to, I want people to not look at me like some kind of superstar because I'm not. Like, no. I'm just a real person. And this is the way that I express myself through these songs. This is the way, like, that I um, just kind of pour out my heart to the Lord. And it's just the way that I process life and everything that he's doing. And, and he's given me this, this platform and this ministry, yes, but I don't take it lightly. And I just want to always be accessible to people. And I think that that's it. Like, um, whether you're going through, like, the hardest season in your life, um, or you just play the wrong chord on a Sunday morning, like, yeah. or you sing the wrong lyric, like whatever, you know, you just, 
just be who you are and don't be afraid to say I made a mistake or I'm in a hard a hard place. Like, will you please pray for me, you know? And if there are yeah. times where you just feel like um, there might there might be a moment where you get to where you go, I just need to take some time, you know, and talk with your pastor. Like, I just need to take some time away. I need to get some counseling. I need somebody to really pour into my life because I feel like I've been pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, and I'm I'm just running on empty. And I've got nothing to offer these people. And I just need to remember, like, why God yeah. has me in this place again. And I need to remember, like, why I love to call people into the presence of God. Yeah. And and that's a, that's a, that's okay. I think that's awesome. Like, sometimes we get to that place, and the best thing we can do is be honest about it and um, just step yeah. down for a week or two or however long it takes. No, I think um, it's really good and really practical note for people to remember that you don't need to be – up leading 20 weeks in a row, you know, to feel good about yourself. And sometimes we have right. to take uh, uh, the proactive place of pacing ourselves, uh, okay. whether we're in a rough season or not. You know, it's just yep. that's all part of staying real and staying refreshed. And, and yep. you know, we, we have to sort of be get out of this, this church needs me if I'm not doing it it's not going to be yeah. the same kind of mentality and we can easily get into that, right? So Right. Yeah, and I think it took me too. having, like, it took me having three children to re- to mm. realize that I need to create some margin in my life. Yeah. And that was what why it was such a stressful season for us, you know. Um, and now I look at my calendar and I go, okay, I've got at least, like, a weekend here, a weekend there, yeah. um, where I'm just home. Like, I'm not going to schedule anything. I just need to be home. I just need to be with my family because that's healthy and that's life-giving. And if I'm not pouring into them, then what am I really doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, you know, just on the – just kind of the other side, too, of, um, you know, if you need to, like, just take some time, like you said, to be proactive and take some time away so that you can pace yourself, so that you can um, get some wise counsel and um, get to a healthy place again. Like, do it. But there might be also just some times where, like, there were many days when I didn't necessarily feel like getting out and leading worship, but it was the best thing that I could do um, to get my eyes off of what was going on in my own life and just go, God, like, you're bigger than this. And, like, I can't see the whole plan. I can't see the grand scheme of things. But, like, just for the privilege of, like, standing on this platform and, and calling people into your presence and saying, like, hey, uh, you know, we are, we are all, like, coming together as a body of Christ, and we're offering up our worship, and um, it's all going to sound different, and it's all going to look different, and we're all coming from different backgrounds and different places, and we've all got our own brokenness, but it's all beautiful when we come together as the body of Christ and we just offer it up before the Lord. Mm-hmm. And there were so many days where I would just cry through the entire set, but it was like so healing for me. Yeah. Like and it was every it was what I needed just to be in the presence of God. And I could barely sing. But like looking at those words on the screen, whether I can really sing them or not, yeah. but reading them and believing them over myself, believing the truth, even in the hard place. Yeah. That was I would say probably one of the most healing things for me. Really good. Well, I'll tell you, uh, this is what I'd like to do. Is I, w- I want to look at some of the songs in your deeper um, collection. And, uh, and as you tell us through, walk us through some of the stories or maybe some of the, the, the co-writing relationships that you have, how some of your other uh, friends and songwriters have contributed into that. And I just want to encourage people as we're listening, um, this is a great opportunity for you to, to deposit into this, time we have with webinar with sorry with Meredith and uh, I'm not going to have you know just so you know I'm not going to have people come online here but you can just write in your question if you have and and if there are a few questions at the end we'll take some time to to just really personalize this to people who are who are listening in so so um, we have already talked Meredith about deeper and it certainly um, casts a bit of a theme over things. I was just watching the the acoustic video of you and I think it was, was that uh, Jacob and then Mia Fields um, singing that? There's a, there's the, the videos in our blog actually in Praise Charts. So, uh, so maybe tell us a little about how Mia 
uh, kind of worked into this song. I know that she's a real friend of the community at Harvest and Vertical and and uh, a great song co-writer, songwriter. So, so give us a little window yeah. into that. Okay, I have to say, Ryan, I lost you for about 30 seconds there. So oh, I'm sorry. Think. No, it's okay. okay. So I heard the front about like songs on the record and then the last part about Mia. So Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering, I was saying, that. that's right, I was saying that we just posted the video uh, of, of you and Mia and I believe Jacob was playing guitar, right? So that's guitar. in our, uh-huh. our blog that just kind of came out. So I just was, I was, thought you could tell us about uh, how Mia played a role in that song. And, um, and even as we go through some oh, yeah. of the other songs, I love hearing about the, the community, uh, the songwriting you know, experience of working together with people and how they totally. contribute to the, to the flow and development of the songs. Yeah. Well, Mia is, uh, like, she's a force to be reckoned with, and she's a I good know. friend of ours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, she walked with us through, um, you know, all the hard stuff we were walking through. And so she knew she knew exactly where we were, you know. Like, I, we had had multiple conversations. She um, was very instrumental and influential in um, just – speaking truth over us and um, encouraging us and kind of like keeping our heads up and our arms up, you know. And so uh, when it, when we got together to write deeper, you know, we were still like in the thick of it, you know. Um, and, and we just, I think it was just like out of the conversations that we had had about just believing um, that God uses hard things in our lives to refine us and to prepare us and um, and to strengthen us. You know, he's trying to strengthen our spiritual muscles. And so it was just out of those conversations. And I was like, I, I remember writing the song very well. Just every line that we were coming up with just going, yes, yes, that's it, yes. Like I just felt like... I need to sing this right now, you know. Yeah. I want to. I'm singing this over my own soul, long yeah. before anybody else hears it. Um, and I'm just so thankful for the way that she writes because sometimes that girl, like, she can just put, she can put words to anything. Like, she's so yeah. articulate, and the Lord has gifted her lyrically, just to go like where I would say something's pretty plain and just like whatever. She's just like can make it come to life. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's that's exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> So that's awesome. I'm just so thankful yeah. to have her as a part of our team. Well, and it looks like she was also a part of the Soar song as well. I'm just yep. flipping through a few of the songs. So she really had a hand in some, some very significant songs. Uh, and, totally. Uh, yeah. And Seth uh, Mosley, I see his name there. Jason Ingram. Yes, and maybe we can just mm-hmm. talk about some of the people that, uh, that were a part of this project. Jason Ingram was a part of... Um, uh, let's see, I just was looking here, Lamb, oh, Lamb of God, actually, and that's a song that has already been on a previous album, but been a very significant yeah. song, so um, right. you were telling us a little bit about your relationship with uh, Jason as a family, and um, how he's mm-hmm. kind of, I mean, he's had an impact on so many people. He's another person, I've done a few webinars with him, and I always feel really relaxed when I'm with him, because he's Good. a big superstar, but I don't feel totally. like it when I'm talking to him on the phone. I just feel like, oh, it's just, yeah. a, it's just a brother, you know, and he's just yeah, for sure. He has that way about him. Yeah, he really I does. Know. I actually so. hung out with him yesterday. Um, Jacob and Andy and Jason and I were we're writing, we're working on a song together um, mm-hmm. for the upcoming Vertical Church pro- project. And I, every time I'm in the room with him writing a song, I'm just like, how do I get to be here? You know, he. Yeah. He and I go way back. Like, I've actually known him longer than I've known my husband. Because when I first came to Harvest, um, about six months later, I got an email from this Jason Ingram guy that I didn't really know who he was. Um, and he was like, hey, would you like to come to Nashville and write? And I was like, well, sure, why not? So I planned a little trip four days in December back in, like, 2006. And um, that was the first time we met, and we wrote like all four days, and those songs turned into songs for the first project that I did with Word uh, called The Invitation. And he um, he's been probably one of the biggest champions for me, and uh, 
And yeah, it's just like he's such an amazing songwriter, and I'm I'm just or I realize like how you know how awesome he is, like and how yeah. the way just how the Lord has gifted him. Every time I'm in the room writing with him, and just thankful for the opportunity, and yeah, he's really championed us, and uh, really like just so thankful that again, like he's on our team. I'm just thinking about. Uh... Like when when you go through all these challenges and trials and you know those growing times, don't we all just really need a champion to sort of you know walk through that season with us? Like sounds like Mia was kind of like that, and and yeah. Jason, and uh, and even for us to think if you're not going through this fire right now, who are you the champion for? Because somebody else needs right. you, and uh, that sure is something I I'm thinking about. In my early years as a worship leader, I had this 85-year-old guy who, you know, wow. did not really like all of the contemporary songs I was bringing yeah. to church necessarily, but he yeah. was my champion. He would come and wrap me in his arms after a service and just like, Ryan, you are anointed by God, and I'm mm. so grateful that you're in this church, and I'm just getting shivers now as I'm, I'm telling awesome. you this, but um, yeah. we need to be that for someone, and then also recognize that we, we really need that, uh, people yeah, to absolutely. come along beside us. So I saw absolutely. Matt Mars uh, name in a, a song there, I Look to the King. Um, yep. These are just some, some other relationships that, uh, that you have. He's an incredible songwriter, and yeah. just saw him actually the last two weeks ago. I was at the uh, NAM show. And so he did a, a cool. night of worship, and boy, he knows how to bring a time of worship into a you know a massive you know world show. Like that's not a Christian Absolutely. worship you right. know, thing, yeah. but they know how to bring it. And boy, that was it was uh, I was just really admire him a lot. Yeah, so. totally. It's so funny because like with Matt, uh, he, his family they live five minutes from us, and they've got a little boy that's like in between my boy's age and. Um, yeah. pages and and so we hang out with them a lot and so it's it's again I have to kind of go like oh yeah you're this like massive songwriter yeah. <laughs> but you're also kind of you know a goober which yeah, right. he is. like he's he's awesome and we just we love hanging out and the song that we wrote together actually came after um, Jacob and I went to see the last Hobbit uh, the Battle of the Five yep. Armies. And it's during the this, you know the massive battle that they're losing and they're outnumbered and um and Thorin is leading his army and they're just being defeated and all of a sudden from seemingly out of nowhere here comes his dwarf cousin with his massive beard on this wild boar and he's got his sword in the air and he just yells to the king and mm-hmm. after that well we were like let's. We're, I think we're going to write a song about that. You know, Jacob had this whole idea. He always gets song ideas after he sees a movie like that. <laughs> but um, we came home and started working on the chorus and took the chorus to Matt and uh, and finished it out with him. But, yeah, and that was a fun day. Yeah. Um, and we actually yeah. just did a – we recorded a video last week for it just in his studio, me and Matt singing it. So, oh, great. Um, I look yeah, forward we love to, uh, to hearing that. Yeah. Hey, um, our time is dwindling, but I, I, we were talking a little before about the, the new Vertical Church album coming up. Yeah. Can we take a little bit of time and you could give us a bit of window into totally. some of these other projects you're working on? I love the music that comes out of uh, Vertical. I think I might be just clarifying my mind, and I'm sorry if I sound a little bit dumb here, but so there's Vertical yeah. and there's Harvest Bible Church and Vertical yeah. Church, and how does that all <laughs> blend together again. Just, just clarify it's that. All, Is it the it's same thing or different? Like, yes, it's like the Trinity kind of. Okay. Oh, not. the Trinity. I now I get it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like it's water not. and ice and steam, yeah, kind of like at the same so, time. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Pretty okay. Much. So Harvest Bible Chapel is the church. Vertical Church is a book that our pastor wrote uh, okay. that kind of re set the course for our church a few years back, I guess like five years ago. And so out of that, we were just like, well, we're the Vertical Church band. I don't, you know, I don't even know who said, like, this is going to be our name or why we even need a name or what. But I think it was around the time that we started um, talking about releasing records 
um, songs that were written in our church for our church, um, but just believing that God would take them beyond the four walls of our church. Yeah. So um, that is what Vertical is, uh, Harvest, Vertical Church, Band, Vertical Church, all the same. Um, we So this is a, an insane season for my family right now because I'm releasing a record next week, um, and then two, week, two weeks after that, or less, it's a, more like a week and a half after that, we're going to be recording the fourth Vertical Church album. It's a live album. We're going to do it up in Chicago on March 2nd and 3rd. And um, so you can imagine, like, I'm doing interviews and traveling, getting ready for this record, and Jacob is doing all the pre-production for Vertical Church record. So, um, and then that's what we were doing yesterday. So if, if there's a ton of overlap, and I, I feel like by the time – middle of March hits, I'm going to be like, what's my name and where am I? (laughs) And all the while you've got little kids playing harmonica on the other side of the door there (laughs) that need some attention. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're they're so deprived of attention, you know. Anyway. I'm sure not. Um, (laughs) I know, but... Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of a lot happening right now in our family and, uh, but it's really full and I'm just... Fine. Like even though it's crazy, I'm just so thankful that like mm-hmm. we're in a place now um, where it feels full, and some days it feels like too much, but yet we still feel like we're still just we're good. We're even. We're like okay. We learned from the last two years when it was just absolute chaos and we didn't know how to deal, and mm-hmm. um, and we just felt like we were. Com- always under attack and we were um instead of living in harmony with one another we were blaming one another you know it's just that stress and you want to like or you know you want to like point the finger at somebody else but it's like okay how how do i handle this responsibility and what do i need to let go of you know and so like we're in such a better place now such more um much more of a healthier place and so it's actually enjoyable even the the insanity and the crazy like scheduled and I mean last night I was up with my one year old from for two hours I don't know why (laughs) she just didn't want to sleep so it's like all of that but it's still just like we're uh, we're just super blessed and excited to be a part of what God is doing like in the songs that are coming out totally any any sort of um uh light you can shed on what's coming from the the new vertical album like any songs that you're excited about or or uh, yeah, I don't know, um, particular moments that you've had in preparing for that. What's what's uh, give us like a, an insider scoop on 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 that one? Yeah, sure. Well, I've um, for a while I was feeling a little bit removed from the vertical album just because mm-hmm. I was so concentrated on my album coming out. Um, but I have been so blessed by these songs, and I think it's been really good for me. Uh, just to sing them, even though I didn't, ha- I've only got like maybe one uh, song that I've written that's going to be on there. But um, like just singing them out at church, like there's a song yeah. called "Set My Heart," um, that Mia actually had a hand in writing with two of our guys, and um, it's just this thing of going, "I will set my heart, set my heart on you. Um, you have every part of me, so I will set my heart on you." And it's just that like choice to go, God, I'm going to like focus on you. Like I set my eyes, I set my heart on who you are, regardless of what's going on in my life. And I just think that that's so good for us to sing. And it has been for me and for our church and I think for anybody really. And um, there's a song that I, I think, like we're still nailing down like who's singing what and what songs are going on the album. Like we kind of do that like up to the last minute. But uh, there's a song um called Holy Spirit Come that Jacob wrote with I think Jason and Mia and Matt Mar and uh and I love it. And I don't know like I always get the Holy Spirit songs but I'm okay with it. Like <laughs> I love the Holy Spirit songs. Yeah. And um, they do well. They do very well. So I guess so but uh, you know, Jason brought up a good point yesterday. He was like, "So how's this going to work when you'll take it on the road? Are you going to do Spirit of the Living God and come Holy Spirit?" I'm like, "Well, yeah, I guess yeah. you're going to have to like mash them together, you know? So <laughs> like, we'll figure it out. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it." But I believe the album is going to be called Frontiers, and it's a, a song that Jacob wrote with Andy and a girl named Lindsay. Um, oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful song, and. 
the chorus just simply says, take me to the end of myself. Um, yeah, and, um, or, yeah, lead me to the end of myself, take me to the edge of something greater. And it, just over and over, oh, and uh, the, the bridge lyric. talks about, like, I'm standing on the great frontiers of your love. Yeah. Um, you have overcome my deepest fears with your love. And so the song is called Frontiers. I think the album's going to be called Frontiers. And I'm excited. I think it's going to be... Um, I think it's going to be really good. Hmm. That's all. Well, I Meredith, you've yeah. been uh, super, super encouraging, very real, very relaxed. You know, which is uh, which is always good. You didn't make me feel. I was like sweating. You know, 15 minutes before, I'm like, what am I going to ask this girl? And oh god, you know, oh, <laughs> you know, but uh, you've made it very easy. Well, I'm easy. sorry. I'm and, sorry that I couldn't have put your mind at ease 15 minutes oh. before. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, I just you know how it is. I'm sure. Every time, ten minutes before you're on stage, you get the little butterflies, and it's like, okay, you know, is this going to be what? What fresh thing is going to come from this? And I think that's what I try to bring into these, you know, interviews where where I don't want to just be like another interview. I really want to, I don't know, just allow a person to be very real and sharing their stories and and have something Absolutely. something special that was. For you and I, and for the people that are listening in, and just hearing, and and um, of course I, you know, have a lot of a lot of different places where I relate to your story as well, because I'm, you know, I just I'm a musician too, and I don't yeah. just do uh, I'm not just like a Nashville, you know, music publisher mus- uh, machine. I'm kind of like I was the the worship leader, worship pastor, who was frustrated, he couldn't find the music, so then yeah. Praise Starts sort of flowed in and started, you know, now Praise Starts is thriving, but I spend a lot of my time just, uh, you know, I have a little band that I work with, and uh, and I become right. like this consumer of the music. I go through and download music from my own site and, you know, experience it all, and that's what I really enjoy is just, you know, we lead worship for these, Guys, uh, you know we do. We're doing a worship night in a couple of um, couple of weeks. Actually, another thing that's oh. really neat, just a little piece of my story, is my dad had a stroke uh, two weeks ago. Oh. Um, he and I have this little kind of we're a little country duo, you might say. So he's recorded two albums now, and we were scheduled to do a concert today at noon. But two weeks yeah. ago, he wasn't able to speak and had no mobility in his right hand, which, of course, is his wow. drumming hand. Right. So, and, I mean, we have, we have a Caribbean cruise that we're planning on going in, uh, you know, six weeks for their my mom and dad's 50th wedding anniversary. All these plans suddenly were like, ah, you know, what's happening? Our world is, you know, and my dad... I was like lying in the hospital bed, tears coming down his face as he's trying to like, you know, put words in his mouth. He can could barely speak. So anyways, the cool thing wow. is my dad's home from the hospital, still barely can speak, still has no mobility in his arm, but we're going to do this little concert now at literally like in an hour and and one of the one of the songs that we're doing he forms the chords, and I, uh, I strum for him. We did a wow. little YouTube video, and it just kind of went all over the place. If people go to my Facebook, you can see it. So uh, I just said to Dad, That's why cool. don't we just do this? Like, let's just be real. And he's going to sing, and he can barely sort of pronounce the words, but it's just all part of we don't need to be perfect. We just need to be authentic, and that's what's yep. going to um, reach people. So that's kind of like, you know, my world for for today. And uh, I'm super grateful wow. that, and uh, just trusting that God will continue to, you know, bring His speech back, and His um, His hand. Because I mean, all my dad lives for is playing three chords on a country guitar. Mm, that's all yeah. he D, you know, G yeah. and A, and he's good to go. So. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, anyways, I'm just trying to really uh, uphold him, and you know, and be there alongside. So, Absolutely. so that's my well, my afternoon. That. We'll be praying. Yeah. We'll thank be you praying very much, for you guys, and for your dad. Yeah, thank you. And maybe just to close this off, I would love it, Meredith, if you would pray for uh, all of us who've been listening in, and just 
just All pray right. God's anointing and, and ministering to us as worship leaders and pastors. I've got to think that there are people listening who are like saying to themselves, oh, this is, you know, like they're in the thick of it right now and don't yeah. really know which way to turn and um, don't know if, you know, they even are worthy or deserving of getting up on stage next Sunday or I don't know the different struggles they're in. So you've really, it's like you've leveled the playing field in, in your testimony yes. today. Just you've like swept away all of the the expectation and the pressure, particularly from the Lord, like the Lord doesn't put that pressure mm-hmm. on us, you know, that's and right. he's a God of grace. So just yep. pray that into us and that's how mm-hmm. we're going to close out our time and wrap okay. it from there. Thank you. Sounds good. Lord, thank you so much for this Mm -hmm. time that we've had together. Um, I can't see the faces of the people that are listening, but you know their hearts and you know their stories and you know them intimately. And God, I just lift them up before you and I just ask that you would meet them right where they are. Um, I know that many of them are serving in their local churches. They're serving you. They're serving um, the people that you place in front of them. And God, I just ask that you would give them an extra measure of grace and perseverance and i pray for all of us god that we would find ourselves um we would find ourselves at your feet on a regular basis because god we can't take people where we haven't been ourselves so lord i just pray that you would draw us into your presence just in the middle of our day because i know for me i I can't always carve out an hour alone in a quiet place because there's not really any quiet place in my house with three little kids. But God, I thank you that you meet us wherever we are and that um, and that you speak to us and that you want to reveal yourself to us. And so, God, I just pray that you would do that. Even in um, the middle of our crazy days, God, I just ask you to give us eyes to see you and ears to hear you. And um, may our hearts respond in worship to you. God, may we sing out a new song when we're driving in our car or doing the dishes or whatever, Lord, may we, um, may we lift up our hearts to you in worship because that is um, what's going to overflow into the time that we have when people are looking at us and they're saying, okay, where are we going? What are we doing? And, God, we can't, um, we can't go where we haven't been before. So, Lord, help us to lead well um, by first spending time with you and leaning in and listening for your voice and learning what it means to worship you in the secret place. And, God, I just pray for uh, my brothers and sisters that are walking through trials and hardships and feeling heavy burdens on their backs. God, I just pray um, that you would lift those burdens, that you would strengthen them in the midst of it, that you would um, be so real and so near in this hard season and that they would know that um, you are working it all out for our good and for your glory, and you're developing this perseverance and this character and this hope inside of us. And God, I lift up Ryan's dad before you, God. I know that you've given him, you've gifted him um, with the gift of song, and there's so much joy that comes just from playing music with his son. And Lord, I just pray for um, complete restoration of um, his speech and ability to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, God, I pray for healing over his body in Jesus' name. And um, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to encourage Ryan and uh, God continue to use him um, uh, through praise charts and at his church and in his family. God, I just thank you for the work that you've called him to and I just ask you a blessing for it. God, just help us all to be faithful with what you've um, placed in front of us today and, uh, and in this season and not to get ahead of you but just to trust you for what's coming next and just to know that this season and this process is so important and that you're making us who we're meant to be. And Lord, we just want to live to please you and to bring you honor um, and we want to live to love you well and love other people well God to help us to do that and be glorified in us in Jesus name amen 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 thank you thank you Mary yeah it's a beautiful oh. time and uh, and just want you to know that as you get ready to uh, launch your full album next week we're going to be right there with you right behind we've got mm-hmm. all the charts ready to go i, I wish i could all just right. press uh, go on them all today but apparently we have to wait for the rest of them that's till, not uh, my rule not i know rule. i know but the songs <laughs> are there for people who are listening in and three of them are there go to our blog you can see a number of the acoustic videos they're really beautiful uh like simple acoustic presentations of some of these songs very accessible 
they're not even so much teaching videos. They're 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 just playing the song in a in a just a you know natural kind of environment. So I, I really like how you present the songs like that. And mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so we just definitely want to continue to support you in all the songs and uh, stories that you're bringing to uh, to the church. You're a great great heart. And uh, no, I appreciate that. Thanks, uh, Ryan. Lot. Okay, thanks. I'll awesome. let you go, and uh, God bless you. Yeah. There it is. Okay. God bless you, and God bless okay. all of you guys. I see your comments coming in, so thank yeah. you. It was a privilege. Okay. All right, I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye then. All right, bye. Well, that was really great, and thank you to all of you who stayed with us. I hope you were ministered to in that time. And, uh, yeah, just she really relates so well. And... Um, Lots of great songs that Meredith has been a part of. Just flipping through some of them online now, Open Up the Heavens, and uh, Spirit of the Living God, Strong God. Oh, great songs that, uh, that go back in, in the last five to seven years. Worth it all. A lot of the songs we have chord charts and lead sheets for. Many of the, the more prominent songs, there's full orchestrations, multi-tracks, all different kinds of resources like that. And then um, uh, also from the blog, you can check in on some of the videos and, and uh, articles and just helpful tools like that. So hopefully you'll find uh, the resources that you need from, from Praise Charts and, and, uh, and other places like that to just encourage your church in your worship ministry. So I think we're going to wrap it up from here. Oh, just I guess the last thing I would say is that we did record this whole time. So uh, it takes uh, usually, I don't know, maybe four to five hours to process that and get it all up. We just post it onto YouTube because it's an easy place to sort of get to and share around and things like that. We'll have the, the whole webinar in our blog. So just stay tuned for that. and. Do we have a link for that? I wonder if Natasha is controlling the PowerPoint right now, and I'm not sure if there's a link. But if there's not, then you can just... Oh, yes, there is. The Promised Hope with dashes in between. PraiseStarts.com forward slash the dash promised dash hope. So right now, if you go there, you're just going to see a link to say we're processing the, the webinar, but it will definitely be ready probably by this afternoon. And uh, and that's it. So I'm going to be heading off. My mom and dad are scheduled to be at my house in f 10 minutes. We're going to load up with all our gear, head off to uh, the church where we're going to sing. So I'm really looking forward to that. So that's my day, and I'm sure you all have your own slice of ministry or meetings or practices and rehearsals and all of that. So So just encourage you to do that with all... Uh, all that you are, and and uh, look forward to a great week next Sunday. So this is Ryan Dahl from PraiseCharts.com signing off after a great time with Meredith Andrews. All right, talk to you later. <laughs>